It's been almost two years since I made a video about going full time as a landscape photographer and in that video I said I made a promise to myself that I would never lose sight of what's important to my work, you know the roots of my photography and that I would always maintain integrity. And part of integrity is being honest and the truth is is that I've really been struggling recently, just struggling for motivation, I've just been quite disillusioned with my job as a photographer. And there's various reasons for that, you know, the most obvious is the, the pandemic situation and the huge impact that's had on my business with all my international clients having to cancel their place on my Scotland workshops. That's been incredibly frustrating and disappointing for them and very stressful for me and that stress has compounded my chronic pain issues and just sort of started this cycle of negativity and I could feel the passion just slipping away and I knew at that point it was dangerous because if I lose the passion then it's game over you know without that fire in my belly then how can I hope, hope to create images with soul you know without that fire then how can I hope to teach with any real success so I knew it was something that had to be nipped in the bud and done so quickly so I just decided to take a couple of weeks out just to have some time to myself without the camera just to take stock and put things into perspective and during those two weeks I've met up with some friends as well so I've met up with Sean Tucker and Alex and Dave and that's been massively helpful just to have those positive conversations with fellow photographers you know just to thrash things out, get things off our chest, meet in the middle and then come away with a more positive attitude and a different mindset. Uh, so yes, thank you to them and, and their time. Um, but also during those two weeks, I felt it was important to still come out to some of the places that I enjoy, but without the camera. So I just came and had walks with Meg, walks with Meg and Adele. Um, and that was great just to enjoy the environment for what it is and it was just recently where we walked through this woodland and I realized that I'd not been to this place for almost two years again and I could feel the excitement coming back um, because the thing that I've always enjoyed the most about photography is that first step of the process of exploration and discovery I absolutely love it just fine you know we're talking tiny little pockets of woodland just these little hidden gems you know this woodland here it'll take me two minutes to walk the length of it absolute max but just these little nuggets uh, that's what i get excited about you know it's exploration on a small scale but uncovering these places and working them and finding potential and making images which capture the the essence of these locations that's what i thrive off but i also realized that something needed to change in terms of how I made videos because it was starting to feel too much like a job and it, it is part of my job but I need to, I have to really enjoy the process too but it felt as if I was just coming in rushing you know shooting the video making the images and then leaving whereas years ago when I first started I didn't care about whether I made a portfolio grade images on image or not I was probably out for hours and I shot bits of video in between and just shared part of the process and practice of photography and I need to get back to doing that and sharing more of those mediocre days, mediocre days in terms of the images that I create but successful days in terms of enjoyment and uncovering potential for the future because it's not realistic to only show the great days where you create great images because it's just not like that. You know, we spend most of our time coming out, you know, having a little bit of disappointment in terms of the end result, um, but always coming away that little bit more enriched. Um, so I want to share more of those days because, you know, it's important, like I said, that I stay excited about making videos too. So I've come back to this woodland that I walked through just recent, recently with Adele. I think it is going to be one of those days where I don't create anything that's particularly magical or is reminiscent of the type of images that I want to create here. But I should hopefully get some good compositions and that's the start that I need. And I'm genuinely, genuinely happy to be here excited again I've got that passion that passion back it didn't take long but I just needed that time out and it's important to I think for me to share that and share that experience with you because 
I think there's a lot of pressure sometimes to always be positive on YouTube and you, you can't do it you can you know not not with honesty you can't be positive with honesty all the time because life's not like that the very best of us go through a crisis of confidence or where we just feel disillusioned or we lose faith in our work it just happens but the important thing is is that we get back on track and I feel back on track now so uh, yeah that's where that's where I've been at I'm um, back in the right place now so we'll have a wander around see if we can find some nice compositions and uh, yeah hopefully you enjoy it <laughs> So I've got my first composition lined up here, which I seem to recall is a scene that I took a scouting shot of uh, a couple of years ago, but I just never got around to coming back and making this image work. So it still feels like, um, not so much a scouting shot, I think it will come out quite nice, but this, this is definitely a scene that I would want to come back to under more desirable conditions. But it's a lovely open scene. Um, it's quite convenient, just off the path near the entrance to the woodland. And it's just got that quality that I really love and often admire in woodland, which whereas what you've got that lovely natural spacing and breathing room around the trees. So we've got a series of older trees, um, and I think it was in a very recent video, my last video perhaps, where I talked about enjoying photographing older trees recently. Uh, not one that I've really photographed that much, but they are a nice tree to photograph at this time of year because they don't take on a lot on a lot of colour in the autumn time. Mm -hmm. But they do have this fantastic feature, which is very, very obvious here, where we, there's all this growth coming up at the base of the trees. And it offers a lovely foundation and vibrancy to the image as well, where we've got these fresh leaves um, and all these thin branches at the, bases, at the base of the trunks. And the unusual quality, um, which is quite unique about this woodland, is that it's, the understory is very grassy. It's incredibly clear and clean which again is highlighting some of that um, breathing room and space in the image um, so yeah there's quite quite a lot growing for it there's a there's a birch tree further back there's some oak trees back there as well so I would be very very interested in coming back here in the autumn time but in terms of the nature of the the landscape I'm kind of looking down the hill but I'm trying, I've, I've brought the camera down quite low so I'm not looking down on the scene. I don't want to ruin the perspective of the trees. I just want to look dead on. And then the, the land just falls away very steeply down to the river. And then there's the opposite valley side. And I think the opposite valley side is plantation. So that's, we can't really see much of that, but at least it's offering a consistent tone in the background. And there's a bit of yellow coming through as well from an, an oak tree, the leaves on the oak tree back there, right in the middle. And again, like I've often talked about is that the the balance of light in the scene and it is nicely balanced it's coming through from an opening in the canopy there highlighting some of that texture in the tree bark bringing out some of that vibrancy at the base of the trees then it gets dark so we start to get that feeling of layers and then once we hit the valley it's then light so we get that feeling of light coming in from the back as well and it certainly feels more concentrated in the center of the image so that's really nice now I'm having to be very very precise with positioning um, I'm going for a 16 9 crop and there's literally no room to spare it's so tight to get it into that 16 9 um, but that's what works it gets in this lovely series of of trees um, it feels nicely balanced in terms of weight everything's just green green and yellow so the balance in terms of color is fine and yeah precision in terms of getting the separation in the trees but to be honest when, we, when I'm talking about precision I think for me you can have pre precision in a composition and it still be poetic because I guess you do run the risk of having too much precision where everything feels quite formulaic but I think the poetry in the image comes from your 
sensitivity to the relationships in the scene um, or the expressions in the trees if you like so when we look at the shapes and the interactions in the trees you know rather than just looking for I think if we only look for precision in terms of separation between the subjects mm -hmm. then we do risk it appearing a little bit clinical or formulaic but if we're getting that separation and we've also got um, that sensitivity to the the expressions the interactions the flow through the scene um, and we're capturing that successfully in the in, in the image then that's when I think it works and we can still have that little bit of poetry and that nice flow through the scene um, but let's well, I'll have a look at the have a look at the back of the camera actually and I'll show you how things look back here and the settings that I'm going to use so you can probably see what I mean now in terms of precision because there's just no wriggle room whatsoever in terms of framing up this scene. Uh, we've got this nice band of green at the bottom here just to frame things off. There's no room to spare whatsoever to the left and the right of these clusters of leaves and branches. And if I just zoom out a little bit, there's a skyline up there. I think it is important in this instance to just nip that out. We can just manage to do that. Uh, because it would offer a, a bit of a distraction in this case. We really want to kind of be more immersed into the centre of the image. And I do quite like this opening here and this silver birch tree back there. Now in terms of focus, first of all I need to decide where I'm going to focus. I'll probably focus on this tree over on the right hand side. It's just that little bit further into the scene. Um, so by the time I've focused on there and set the aperture that I want to use, we should get this all these foreground trees nicely in focus a decent level of focus in the background too so we've got a good depth of field just to bring out all that texture and detail but I tend to have the aperture right open to start with so f2.8 that's going to give me a shallow depth of field and when I use my shortcut button for focus peaking and then zoom into this bit the shallow depth of field just makes it really easy to fine-tune the focus like that and I can come back out set it to f11 in this case but I do have to wait for a calm spot it's actually quite calm now so I'll take the photograph now there we go uh, because the shutter speed's only a quarter of a second so I just need that calm spot because I'd, I'd rather get all the detail rather than any blurry bits any blurry leaves so that's looking that's looking pretty good I've got the white balance set to daylight that's given a fairly accurate representation of what reality is right now um, and that's how I like to work is capture reality and then that provides me a really sound starting point in the editing suite and then I can make some minor color changes at that point if I want to Clients often ask me on workshops, you know, what are you, what are you looking for when you walk through woodland? But I don't think there's necessarily any definitive answer. It just really depends upon the woodland, what mood you're in that day, whether you've got any preconceived ideas for that location or, or not. But it could be any number of things. It could be a specific standout tree. It could be a, a combination of trees and the relationship between them. It could be layers of light and shadow it could be a pattern of colors or a combination of textures i think the key thing is is just to keep your mind open to any number of possibilities um and i think what's tricky is that wherever you go in woodland there's always nice things to look at you know look in all directions here and visually it's very pleasant to look at but it's trying to decide and be very 
judgmental about well does it actually work as a photograph because I can look at things here and it'd be aesthetically pleasing doesn't necessarily make it a successful image um, but just there's something in front of me here which just catches my eye so going back to the previous image where we've got all these lovely kind of leaves and branches at the, growing at the base of trees they to me create a lovely texture and quite an interesting uh, softness against the the harshness of those older tree trunks We've got a combination of ferns and brackens around the base more texture um, but then in the back these trees are quite dark themselves you can see here the tree trunks are quite dark and then there's this feeling of light in the background so again those combination uh, combination and layers of light and shadow in order to get depth when things like fog aren't giving it to you so uh, kind of looking here do you know what am I actually trying to make an image here yes let's try and make something work So I'm just waiting for the sun to soften. There's plenty of clouds around, so just as it starts to pass behind some clouds and we get some nice soft light in the background, that's probably going to be about the right time to take it. I'm sure I just heard thunder a few moments ago, um, which I quite like the... Although if it's a bit dodgy under trees, I quite like the idea of that, because if we get a heavy downpour, then that's going to do wonders for... Uh, well, for this scene and the previous one, I'll probably go back to the previous one as well because all our wet foliage just adds a lovely quality not only to the colour but the feeling of light in the scene um, but particularly in this one because we've got all the foliage at the bottom if all that's wet and reflective then that's going to work really nicely here because it's taken up quite a large portion of the scene but essentially like, uh, like I was saying was I do like this growth around the base of some of these old trunks and we've got the bracken here as well which is just adding adding more texture but there's just quite a nice quite a nice shape to it it's just very directional in terms of the bracken from the left just leaning inwards there's just a tiny bit on the right coming in as well um, and it's just helping to fill some of those shadow areas down at the base of this tree and i have got some of the moss on these older tree trunks and then in the background there's just this window through the canopy um, to an alder tree back there we're like well looks like a twin trunk alder tree back there and that isn't must get a lot more sunlight it doesn't have much moss on it the bark is quite light colored and it just gives an interesting contrast to these foreground trees and therefore that little bit of extra depth um, and just that feeling of light shining down hitting that distant tree and some of the bracken and ferns back there as well as we kind of hide under this darker canopy here it's quite nice i quite like it it's um it's definitely about you know it's not about mood and atmosphere or an immersive woodland scene or anything like that it's more about the textures and details and things that are going on here but we have the secondary component back there which is which is quite nice so I'll focus on the main all the main detail here um, if i shoot at f11 the background is going to be softer that's absolutely fine there's no need for that to be in crisp focus back there in my mind anyway um, so yeah we'll give that a go just wait for that light to dim down a little bit more I'll capture it now rather than waiting to see if uh, a thunderstorm does come over but I'll keep my fingers crossed for that one so framed up a 5x4 crop um, I can see a 3x2 on the back of the camera which also looks quite nice because we've got this branch arching over the top offering a bit of a frame but I think I prefer it just to crop that out and use the canopy as a frame um, because I want to keep more of the attention on the details at the base of these these tree trunks here but it's quite nice because the trees lean over and take you over towards the top left but then the interest of the background tree then draws you back over and then hopefully it's a pretty nice image to read you know that's that's the theory anyway um, but we've got some nice sort of weeping branches over on the left giving that some of that kind of canopy frame because there is a lean on both these trees and the background tree 
I have taken the camera and tilted it a bit. I don't the even though the lean is naturally there, I think in the final image it might look a little bit too exaggerated. So I've just compensated for that and then followed the lean of the tree with the camera just a little bit. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's quite, I mean, if nothing else, it's, it's quite a nice composition. Um, I will wait for the rain to see if that happens and failing that, I'll just, I'll just come back another time um, because if I really like the composition, I think it's probably one that I might want to capture in the springtime when we might get one of those really nice, vibrant, damp, foggy mornings. But yeah, that'll do quite nicely for now. As you know, Meg is a huge part of this channel. She has plenty, probably more fans than I do. Um, and I think since day one, people have requested that she has her own uh, Instagram page. So I've finally done that. You can find her on Instagram at Meg in the Woods. She's on Facebook as well. And it's just, it's just a bit of fun. Um, I think she's, she means a hell of a lot to me. Um, and I think it'd just be nice to have that platform to share a bit more of her daily antics. So yeah, please give her a follow and uh, laugh along with her. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Thank you very much for watching, as always. And I can't wait to see you for the next one. Just watch me now. Just watch me. Just watch me now. Just watch me. It's all fun, it's entertainment. Just watch me, I'ma be famous. Got my name in the sparkling lights. I'ma do this every night. So glossy from afar. Who's that girl? She must be a star. Can't help but stop and stare. Everybody's new love affair. Damn girl, you be looking for. Just watch me now